This is John from Remotify. In this video, I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to create your own controller templates and Ableton MIDI remote scripts with Control Surface Studio 2.7. So as you can see, I've already got Control Surface Studio open and I also have my virtual MIDI controller open. And what I'm going to do first is I'll add a new script. All scripts and script mappings appear in this left side column and controller templates appear in the right. So to add a new script, I'll just click this plus icon and the new script was added. I'll just give this a name. And then in the controller template section for the script, you can see that Akai MIDI Mix is selected, which is this controller template we can see on the right. And the name is here. Or I could select another one and that'll instantly change. But for this tutorial, I'm going to add a new controller template which is done by clicking the new button. As you can see, we get this message, new controller template added. And then we have a new blank controller template here. So now that we have the controller template added and the new script, I'm going to add some of these controls that we have on the MIDI controller. So first I'll add the three buttons, which if I look at this menu here, you can see that I can add different input types. I'll add the button option and it instantly adds the button here. And I'll just change that to round to match this. And then if I look in the settings, you can see that I can duplicate the selected input or I can delete it. I can change the name to whatever I like, which is handy when you have quite a few inputs on the templates and you're trying to, re well, it's difficult to remember what does what, so you can just name these however you want. You can change the location of the input which can also be done by just clicking and dragging and the inputs just automatically snap to the grid. Also below the visual input settings, we have the MIDI message settings. And then below that is the control settings where you select the MIDI velocity on off values and the switch type. So if I just close the input settings form for a second. In this top right corner, we have the controller template settings, which when I click that, you can open the settings for the controller template and change the name for the template. So I'll change that to the MPK, which is the name of this virtual MIDI piano keyboard. And then below that I can change the square size of the grid if I want, or the grid height and width, which is the overall size of the grid. If I click the input again and open the settings form, what we're going to do now is add some MIDI data to match the MIDI data that this input actually sends. So if I click the MIDI monitor menu and then press the button on my MIDI controller, you can see that this section updated and we can see that the channel type value and velocity value that the button input sends is listed here. And we could manually add them here but an easier way is to simply turn on the MIDI Learn button 
and then press the import on your MIDI controller. And you can see that the data automatically updated. The only thing you need to import if it needs to be done is the velocity value for the on and off options. But if I open the MIDI monitor menu again and click the button on, you can see that it sends 127 when the button is on, which matches this. And then when I turn the button off, it sends a velocity of zero, which matches this. So we just need to change the switch type to toggle. And now when I press the button, you can see that the input actually highlights green. And that is telling me that the MIDI data is correct as Control Surface Studio is finding a matched input for the MIDI data that was sent from the MIDI controller. So I'll add a couple of more buttons to match this. I can either select the Add Button menu option, or with the input selected, I can click on Duplicate Selected Input. If I was to select multiple inputs, the multiple selected inputs display here and you can actually duplicate multiple inputs. And then you can also delete multiple inputs. This is done by holding command or control and clicking. And if I do that and keep either command or control held in, I can also move multiple inputs around my template. So if I just select this one and duplicate it, we now have three buttons and we just need to update the MIDI data for these two. And then I'll add a couple of knobs as well. So if you have an input selected and then you click one of these options, it will add the new input to the right. I'll just move that down to here and then duplicate that. And again, and then I'll turn the knob so we get the correct MIDI data for these as well. So now when I turn each one of these, you can see that we're getting the green highlight. So they're all configured correctly. And now if I just hold command and select them all, I can now move them around. Let's put them here and we'll add a a container around them. So next, I'm going to add a few mappings to this script, which use these inputs. So if I close the script settings form and then add a new mode, I don't need to change anything here. I can just close that. And then in the mode, I'm going to select the track selector mapping type and then for track type I'm going to change that to selected and we don't need to worry about the LED feedback for it so I'll just close that and then we'll just add a few track mapping types so the first one will be the track mute for the selected track and I'm going to have the first button mute the selected track. And then the second button, I'm going to have that um, arm the selected track. And the third button will solo the selected track 
This first knob will control the volume. Or the selected track and we can control the pan with the second knob and then for the final knob we will control the first send on the selected track we'll select knob 6 so now we have the script set up we have the controller template set up correctly so as this is a new installation of control surface studio we just need to set up the location of ableton live which is done by opening the css settings menu and then select the location of ableton live I'm go as you can see, I've got a few different versions of Live here. I'm going to use the Ableton Live 11 suite. And after selecting that, the MIDI remote script folder location was automatically selected. But you can select this manually here. And then for the Live version, make sure you get the right version that you're using, which is 11.06. And then when you select that, the log.txt location automatically populates. And the Python version, Python 3, is correct for Ableton Live 11. So now everything is, is ready here. I can install this script into Ableton Live. You can see we get this success message. Example 27, which is the name of the script installed successfully i'll open ableton live 11 and go to the preferences menu and then you can see that i already have the vmpk set in the input and output i'll just remove it from the second one and then select the new script, which we've just added. All Control Surface Studio scripts prefix the script name with CSS, just so that you don't overwrite one of the default scripts. So the one we created is CSS example 27. So we get that little orange message which tells us that the script installed correctly and then we just need to make sure that for the vmpk out and vmpk in we have track and remote selected which we do so i can close that and now if i select an audio track I'll just move my virtual MIDI controller up a bit. Button one, mute the selected track. Button two, arms the selected track. Button three, solos. Knob one controls the volume of the selected track. Knob two, controls the panning and knob three controls the first send of the selected track and if I select a different track I can do the same thing on that one okay so that's it for this tutorial if you found this interesting and you think Control Server Studio could be of help to you, we do have a lot of other videos on YouTube, which I recommend that you check out, or you can come over to the website, which is remotify.io. Have a look in the forums, join in the chats, or you can contact us directly. Thank you.
Um...